Welcome back to Baghdad. I'm afraid that today we will be talking about death and how it seems to be always around the corner here. And how we're shutting up and shutting down because of fear. In the 1980s, Kanan Makia, an Iraqi dissident, wrote The Republic of Fear, a book revealing the reality of Iraq under Saddam. Today, Saddam is in prison, and we Iraqis are constantly reminded that we have been liberated. But when I look around me, I still see a republic of fear. I started out wanting to ask, does life and death take on a different meaning when we live with them every day? But really, it's not the fear of death, but the way we live our lives today that worries me most. But before I tell you about that, let me show you where you can and cannot go in Baghdad. Today, you don't just tumble out. You need to know which neighborhood you're in because it's a matter of life and death. So here's the Salam Pax quick guide to Baghdad. This is Baghdad, and this is the relatively safe green zone, and this is the airport. The green areas are Shia neighborhoods, and the red ones are Sunni, and those are the ones you should worry about more. The rest isn't safe, it's just no one has claimed it yet, and it would be wise to be careful there too. Death is all around us these days, on our televisions, in our newspapers, and on walls surrounding us everywhere. These black death notices announce the violent end of our relatives and friends. We have even invented strange names for some of these killings. One of the popular ones is ID death. Shia death squads have been killing people with Sunni names and vice versa, as happened yesterday. You don't even know what you're supposed to do or what you're supposed to say anymore. I'm, I'm too afraid to show this on the street. This is my Iraqi ID. I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'm supposed to show this one when someone asks me for an ID, because if I show my other one, the one that says press, that's sort of like a, you know, come kidnap me card. But if I show this, I have the wrong name on it. Which means when I'm out filming, if I go to the wrong neighborhood, I might get killed. People get killed for the strangest reasons. The list of professions you should avoid in Iraq is getting longer and longer. Did you know, for example, that owning a bakery shop can be lethal? The reason bakeries have been bombed is for selling bread to the Iraqi police or military. But most of the time, it is just the ordinary people who are dying. Another career that should be avoided in Baghdad is being a barber. They were one of the earliest professions to be attacked, and I had to go around 10 of them to find one who would talk to me, and he refused to show his face. <laughs> It is us Muslims and that strange obsession we have with facial hair. It seems the big stylist in the sky had decided that beards are good and anyone who shaves them is bad. And that is why a number of barbers have been killed in Baghdad. <laughs> Even though he wouldn't show his face, he was the only barber to agree to go on camera at all because of where his shop is located. Mustafa. It's in the Kadamiya district, a Shia area with an important shrine in the center. My visit to the Kadamiya district today was actually quite an eye-opener. I, um, I realized what it was going to take to um, make um, a place safe in Baghdad these days. You basically have to turn it into a castle. What they've done here in Kadamiya is to surround an area around the shrine with checkpoints, lots of force and police, all of them from the neighborhood, and the stranger would be noticed immediately. 
and once you're inside, it's like um, the old Baghdad again. People are more comfortable on the street. I was more comfortable on the street. I usually have a lot of fear in my stomach when I go around Karada, for example. The reason they created the security ring is because last April, an important mosque in the district was attacked by three suicide bombers, killing more than 60 and causing injuries to over 100 people. The suicide bombers loaded themselves with ball bearings to maximize injuries. After that attack, Shia Muslims in the area feared for the shrine and decided to create something like a fortress. But even here, in one of the safer places in Baghdad, we can't forget the violence all around. But the thing is, despite the dangers, we are all still going out to work. Maybe we're getting used to it, but then again, you can't. We are all trying to learn to live with the constant fear. Another sector of society that's been targeted are physicians and academics. About 217 university lecturers have been killed over the last two years, and recently a list of 400 names has been circulating, and people think this is a death list. We used to think it was like a conspiracy in order to undermine our society, but now it's gone beyond that. Everyone is a target. Take falafel. Yes, stall sellers are being targeted, and so far two have been murdered. And even ice vendors are terrified to talk on camera. The whole taekwondo team was kidnapped, all of them, and two national tennis team players and their trainer were killed in a Sunni district in Baghdad. People think they were killed because they were wearing shorts. In most Sunni districts, the term fashion crime has been given a whole new meaning. You could die for wearing the wrong thing. Because I know you can't wait to get to Baghdad and spend your summer here, I want to give you a couple of tips on what to wear in Baghdad and what not to wear. Let's start with uh, rule number one. Blue jeans have been known to get you into trouble, but tight ones will definitely get you killed. Showing knees is very un-Islamic. Do you want to get into a theological discussion about knees with someone holding a gun? Thought not so. Colorful shirts? Please no weird patterns and no offensive colors. And anything in red has been deemed specially offensive. And to top off your outfit, forget about your cool spiky hairstyle. Hair gel is lethal. I always knew hair products were evil. Now I get divine confirmation. And so here I am on Baghdad streets, modeling my special get killed outfit. You might be wondering now about women. Are there any restrictions um, on what they wear? Uh, well, yes, obviously. I mean, if we left it to the extremists, they would rather have women wearing tents and not go out of the house at all. So I went to Nadal Bayati, a women's rights activist here in Baghdad, and asked her how the situation is for women today. <laughs> فترة بعد فترة جات تدور أكو كتير من الميليشيات المسلحة الموجودة بالشارع هسه إنه أي أمرأة إذا ما ترتدي الحجاب تقتل إنه أي أمرأة إذا كانت يعني حتى لو مرتدي الحجاب ومتبرجة أيضا تقتل The fact is, it doesn't matter how many unveiled women or falafel vendors have been killed or not, because what the rumors have successfully created is a climate of fear. And it is a climate we all do worry about. On the 6th of June, the health ministry released the figures of the dead for the first six months of this year. Baghdad mortuary had received 6,000 bodies, 1,400 in May alone. 
this lack of security for the last three years has left us all angry and frustrated. Before I started shooting this video blog, I talked to one of my uncles about this whole death and, and value of life thing. And, and he told me that um, our lives today are as valuable as empty bullet casings um, on the street after a shooting, meaning absolutely worthless. The other day I, I found a couple of empty rounds on the street and um, I kept them with me in my bag with the camera as a reminder.